Today on Monkey Life. Young male orangutan Jin, who was born at the park, is moving on and makes his feelings known. You're all right, mister. Just calm down. The team try an unusual remedy to fix woolly monkey Cosmo's digestive problems. And the treatment... Yummy. He seems to be enjoying it. ..goes down a treat. Plus, Chimp Kalu makes her first friend. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. I can't keep her in, get her in. Okay. Got it. The park provides a home for more than 260 monkeys and apes from 24 different species. It's going to be an emotional day for the team at Monkey World. Ten-year-old orangutan Jin is leaving to start a new life at a wildlife centre in Kent. One of our boys is graduating today, so he's heading off to Wingham Wildlife Park to um, become the man. Jin's um, going to get a new partner, Molly, um, and in a new fabulous huge house at Wingham. So really pleased for him. I mean, it's always sort of a bit heart-wrenching to wave goodbye to somebody, but we know that he's gonna, like, have a really lovely place to live and be with a lady where he can do his thing and become a man, because right now, the competition in the nursery with Sylvester is just too much. It's been apparent for some time that one of the two young adult males in the nursery group was going to have to move on. The boisterous play sessions between Jin and Sylvester had become testosterone fueled and competitive, leading to some minor injuries. The decision was taken to find a new grown-up home for Jin, and today, the young male, who was born at the park, is leaving for Kent to meet Molly and start his own group. The team have been carefully planning the move for the last few weeks. Jin has been receiving regular training to encourage him into his travel crate for the journey. The drive from Dorset to his new home will take a few hours, and the team are anxious to make it as stress-free as possible. With everything set, Jarno calls Jin through. Hello. Come on, then. Ready? Come here. Hey, buddy. The training has paid off. Set. Good. Boy, here, mate. Doing really, really well, man. It's so calm at the minute. It's just uh, try to uh, make him even more relaxed. Hey, buddy. Once Jarno is satisfied, Jin is calm and relaxed. The team get to work. Fine. Okay. Securing the crate for the journey. And moving the forklift into place ready to transfer the box into the back of the van, which will take Jin to Kent. But the young orangutan works out something is different. In training, he was always let out of the crate. Agitated, he begins banging on the sides of the box. He's not happy with what's going on, but, you know, this is always the really sort of sad bit where you wish you could explain to them what's going on. It's going to be fabulous once he gets there, but he's going to have three to four hours where he's not a happy camper. The maintenance team are well drilled in moving large primates around, and it doesn't take long for Jin to be loaded up. Although he's still letting everyone know he's not happy. You're all right, mister. Just calm down. Jin has spent his entire life at the park and has grown up with many of the keepers. It's going to be tough to wave him goodbye. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Look after our boy. Yeah. All right. 
thank you. Yeah, we'll see you. We all love him to bits. This is going to be a very sad day for everybody here. But, you know, it's part of the process. It's like the kids going off to uni. And um, this is time for Jin to spread his wings and become the man of his group. Two of the Monkey World team will follow on to help Jin settle into his new life. But as he heads off to a bright new future, he makes sure he has the last word. Many of the primates at the park enjoy large, open-topped, tree-filled enclosures, where they can live as natural a life as possible. However, this can sometimes lead to problems. Occasionally, the monkeys and apes pick up parasites or bugs that live in the ground, or are transported by local wildlife. The care team carefully manage and monitor the health of their charges, but there is one youngster who seems to struggle, and that's Cosmo. So Cosmo um, goes up and down. He often has um, diarrhea, quite loose feces, which then has an impact on his condition. So then he gets quite um, scrawny looking. His coat's quite under conditions. Um, the woolly monkeys we do check slightly often because they do come back with a few different parasites. So we just keep a close eye on the woolly monkeys. Cosmo was hand reared from birth after mum Isla rejected him. He's now three years old and has had a few health issues in his short life. Last year, he suffered a number of seizures, which now appear to be under control. But he's always had trouble with his digestion. The staff have altered his diet, and he's even had a course of probiotics. But he still suffers the occasional bout of diarrhea. After much research, the vet team have decided to try a treatment sometimes used to treat humans with gut problems, to see if it helps Cosmo long term. A fecal transplant. The aim is to help the natural bacteria in Cosmo's gut to perform better by introducing good gut bacteria from elsewhere. They're hoping to be able to do this by collecting it from another healthy woolly monkey thriving at the barn woolies. We're hoping to get a fresh sample of faeces from one of the members of the group here um, to test that, making sure there's no parasites and anything untowards in it. Um, and then we're hoping to then feed it to a small amount to Cosmo. Once in his system, it'll hopefully provide a base from which all the beneficial gut flora can grow. It's a bit of a waiting game, but eventually Claire manages to obtain a poo sample. Then it's a race against the clock to get it back to the hospital to be tested to make sure there are no parasites. If the procedure is going to work, it needs to be completed within an hour, from the time the sample was produced to Cosmo ingesting it. So we've got a fresh sample that's about 10 minutes old. So I'm going to use um, a snap test to um, test for Giardia. Um, I'll do a fecal smear. Um, to test under the microscope and uh, flotation as well. Any eggs, um, parasite eggs, floats in a salt sugar solution. Um, so then we'll be able to see if there is anything in it. Giardia is a microscopic parasite that causes diarrhea. It's found in soil, food or water that has been contaminated with faeces from infected animals. Although the woolies have been known to pick it up, today the sample is clear. This is negative, so it's no Giardia. And the other two tests are negative as well. All good to go. Yeah, nothing obvious seen, so we're good to give it to Cosmo. Claire heads straight over to Lavar's group of woolies, where primate care member Kate is waiting. A small amount of the sample is mixed in with one of Cosmo's favourite treats, plain yoghurt, to encourage him to eat it. We're going to go simple and just see if he'll take it in this yoghurt. He does really enjoy it. So let's hope that he'll take it. We'll, we'll see. Hi, Cosmo. What have we got for you? Can you come sit here? Can you take it there? Oh. Yummy. He seems to be enjoying it. Okay, all gone. Good boy. 
So now we'll just wait, um, we'll monitor all his faeces closely and then we'll just have to see if it makes a difference in him and helps him out. The team are hopeful this unusual method will improve Cosmo's health and be a long-term benefit for the youngster. At Bart's Chimpanzee Group, one of the oldest primates at the park, 41-year-old Cindy is recovering from an ordeal. It began a few days ago when staff noticed that what started as a small lump on the right-hand side of Cindy's face was getting bigger. Well, she's had what we think has been an abscess and it's gradually got bigger and bigger. Um, and a couple of days ago, the whole side of her face started, uh, was swelling up. She was put on a course of antibiotics, but the drugs appeared to have little effect. Yesterday morning, the swelling had moved above her lower jaw. It was going across the top of her muzzle on the right side and her eye had started to close. The team contacted wildlife vet John Lewis for advice. He recommended a stronger antibiotic. But when they arrived this morning, they discovered the abscess had burst. It sounds horrible that it's burst. Um, and it doesn't look very nice either, but that's actually better. Um, that's a better prognosis for Cindy because now that, that um, the buildup of pus in there, it, it, it's drained out now, so it's not putting pressure on her. So part of the pain will have been the pressure of the buildup of fluid in, in, a, in the lump. Um, so now that that pressure's been taken away, hopefully that's given us some relief. But now we have the, the exit wound to worry about, so we need to keep that clean and just keep an eye on it. It's imperative Cindy continues with a course of strong antibiotics. Not only will they help clear out the abscess, but should also stop any reinfection from what is quite a large exit wound. So we're doing this three times a day, so it's quite um, a long process for us all. Um, but it's really important that we get this into Cindy um, to stop this infection spreading. Cindy! Cindy is definitely in discomfort. The team have mixed the drug in with orange juice to disguise the taste, after discovering she wasn't a fan when it was first prescribed. No problem this time. And as the highest ranking female in the group, None of the other chimps try and muscle in for a share of what looks like a treat for Cindy. What a girl. Hannah isn't sure what caused the abscess in the first place. A swab of the infected area may help and also identify which bacteria are present so they can give her the right antibiotic. Can I see this? This is when all the training staff put in with the primates pays off. The abscess is obviously very painful and it does take a couple of attempts partly due to a bit of interference from Bart. But Cindy lets Hannah take a swab. Good girl. Oh, there we go. There we go. Hannah's final task is to flush out the wound with warm saline to try and keep it clean, a task that needs to be performed regularly. Oh, good girl. She was really good then. Bart was not keen on me doing the swab, but, but he's just protecting her. He was worried that I was doing something horrible to her, so he was a bit grabby. But in the end, um, we managed to distract him and she was really good. I actually managed to get the swab in the exit wound. Um, it, it's starting to close up a bit now. Um, it's, yeah, I can't see a big open wound like I could this morning, so that's good. She still is pushing gunk out of it, but that's a good thing. Um, we want it all out. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, and she also let me flush a little bit of warm saline on there. So if I can do that frequently, then hopefully it's going to keep it clean um, and stop any sort of infection building up in there again. So, yeah, she did really well there because it must be really sore. So um, I'm really impressed with, with how, how cooperative she's been. It may take a few days, but the cleaning regime and antibiotics should clear up the infection. It looks like Cindy's on the mend. It's a big day for the park's newest arrival. Female chimp Kalu has spent the last nine days getting used to her new surroundings in the comfort of her own individual bedroom. 
but she's been able to watch and interact with the five members of Brian's group on the opposite side of the mesh. If things go to plan, she'll soon be joining them and become part of their troop. We've been doing some side-by-side -side introductions through the mesh with both um, Lulu and mostly Nari. And it's been pretty good, actually, you know, getting to the point of almost boredom now. So it's only one week on, but we think it's time to try opening the door and see what's going to happen. So it's Nari. Um, and we just have to hope Nari's more playful with her at the mesh. But then sometimes that can tr turn into a clash of um, personalities. So we'll have to see. But um, I think it's time for Kalu to take the next step because just sitting in here in the back bedrooms watching the other chimps, it's, it's allowing her to be a bit lazy. So it's time to take that next move. Just hope you're going to be nice, huh? Kalu had been kept as a pet at a ranch in South Africa after being stolen from the wild. When her owner died and no one could be found to rehome her, Alison stepped in. Kalu hasn't come face to face with another chimp for at least 35 years, so it's not surprising she's cautious. Nari is also a relative newcomer to the park. She was rescued from Thailand just 16 months ago, but has taken everything in her stride since and is now an easygoing, playful member of the group. She seems very keen to make friends with Kalu and, after hanging back for a few minutes, greets her in a friendly fashion. Kalu responds in kind and even starts to tentatively groom Nari. The pair soon become involved in a friendly play session. Amazing to see that an aging chimp who's been lacking companionship of her own kind for so long seems so relaxed in another chimp's company. Really pleased how well this has gone so far. Um, and now we just have to strike a balance. Kalu's not very fit, so she's going to get tired, probably ending on a good note and then letting them go again tomorrow is a good thing. And then we can also try Lulu. What's just nice to see, I suppose, is that she hasn't lashed out with anger in terms of somebody coming into her room. And she seems to be enjoying playing with Nari. Um, so we just have to see what happens when those little spats break out. But. Um, so far, so good, and actually really calm. Couldn't be more pleased. Oh. It's a very positive new beginning for Kalu, and the team are hopeful she'll receive the same friendly reception from the rest of Brian's group. The team at Monkey World are experts at rising to the occasion and dealing with the unexpected, particularly when it comes to hand-rearing newborns rejected by their mums. But nine months ago, they were faced with a situation they'd never handled before, looking after a newborn baby Loris. Fast forward to today, and Bobby Dazzler, as she's now known, is a healthy and rather fluffy juvenile Bengal slow Loris. And she's become a permanent resident of the park's Loris complex, spending most of her days in the company of another female, Nora. Nora was rescued from Lebanon 18 months ago and was also hand-reared. Despite both being female, the two are getting on well. As time's gone on, we've seen some really nice sort of grooming and we've seen some play behaviour. Uh, Nora has been a little bit too overexcited at the start because she was so desperate to play with Bobby, so it's taken a while for Bobby to kind of figure out what, what she's doing there. But aside from that, it's actually going really well and it's just fantastic to see this, this little baby who wasn't reared by her mum interacting and having a relationship with another Loris. Introducing Bobby to the sights, sounds and smells of other Lorises at the earliest opportunity was vital for her future development. She's picked up the vocalisations straight away. Um, I think hearing some of the other Loris like sort of uh, clicking and, and making noises in the house has kind of helped Bobby find her own sort of voice. 
Um, and yes, you know, they are both females, so they might not end up spending the whole of their lives together. We might eventually pair them up with males at some point. But the fact that they're youngsters that are getting to spend time together, socialise with another loris, will set them up really well for if they then become part of the breeding programme. Today, the pair are getting a highly scented floral treat. Fresh cut honeysuckle and buddlier flowers. Lorises have a good sense of smell and in the wild have been known to eat nectar from some plants. The team are keen to see how the two girls will react. Anything we put into their rooms that changes the environment a little bit is great. Anything that gets them active and investigating stuff. So I'm hoping that that's what will happen today. It's something different, something maybe a little bit exciting. But yeah, we'll see if the girls uh, enjoy it or not. You ready, guys? Lorises are nocturnal primates, and the inside of their complex is designed to mimic their natural habitat. Bobby and Nora don't disappoint, and are immediately curious to explore something new. Although, in true Loris style, it's not a mad dash. Nora shows what an amazing and powerful grip Lorises possess when she gets excited and playful. She supports her own body weight, and then reaches down to bite one of the branches. Lorises have extremely sharp teeth that come with a dangerous, toxic bite. Tree gum is an important part of their diet, and they love to eat it, gouging it out from the bark with their teeth. It's Bobby and Nora's meal of choice today, rather than the scented flowers Steph provided. Little is known about Loris husbandry, so life at the Loris house is one big learning curve for its residents and their carers. It's been fascinating for the staff to watch because they're so different to all of our other primates. They're so unusual. It's been a really kind of fascinating learning process, sort of seeing how they work and how they work together. It's still early days in Nora and Bobby Dazzler's development, but considering their difficult start in life, it's encouraging to see they're heading in the right direction. Next time on Monkey Life. Alison's in the Netherlands to collect a lonely female woolly monkey who's lost her mate and needs companionship. She's sort of outside looking a little bit skeptical, strange person sort of making woolly monkey calls. And the Stumpies trial their playroom revamp, with Sylvie reaching new heights.